Welcome to the Franchise Woman Podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships are forged. I'm Rebecca Monet, CEO and Chief Scientist at Zoracle Profiles, along with my co-host, community advocate, speaker, author, and entrepreneur, Tracy Kawa. Our special guest today is Kristen Risby. Kristen Risby is VP of Franchising at Wagon Wash. She began her professional career in franchise marketing 14 years ago. Before joining Wagon Wash, Kristen developed her marketing expertise at WellBiz Brands Inc., where she was responsible for shaping brand messaging and growing the marketing efforts of the entire franchise network as a senior director of brand marketing for Elements Massage, Fitness Together, and Fit. 360. Alongside WellBiz Brands, Risby also helped mark, uh, held marketing director roles with legacy franchise brands such as Remax, PostNet International, and the Little Gym International. Suffice it to say, <laughs> Kristen Risby knows a thing or two about marketing and about franchising. So welcome. <laughs> welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Kristen, you have an incredible track record in marketing. Where did this passion develop from? Did you always have it? Was it in childhood? Yeah, no, I, um, I think it came from my father. He was um, started his career in food marketing, um, product marketing. Um, he evolved from there um, in general business, owning his own business. Um, but I'm identical to my father. Um, and so I think I wanted to find something within business. Um, and then in college, in the business college, the first class that I took for marketing was branding. You know, that's where you get started. Um, and I just fell in love with it. Um, the high level strategy of branding. Um, and so I think that's where it began um, that I still have my branding 101 book. I uh, can't let it go because yeah, it is so important to me. And I didn't know it at the time, but now looking back, I do. Yeah. It is always funny to me how much our parents influence us, whether we're conscious or not, right? It kind of happens. And your dad was an entrepreneur um, who was, I guess, I think you told me a great salesperson. He had this talent in that area. What other attributes do you share with your dad besides this kind of passion for business? Oh my goodness. Um, we're identical, um, which is good and bad. <laughs> um, but he gets things done. Um, he knows how to lead. He naturally just steps in to be a leader. He always has, um, whether it was sports or business. Um, and I think I did the exact same in my childhood, um, quietly, maybe a little bit more quietly than my dad did, um, but in my own way. And so, yeah, I would say leadership, drive, ambition, passion, we're both extremely passionate. We're both also very sensitive. Um, so I think I get that from him as well. And, you know, that blend is just so important. Um, and, uh, whether you know it or not, when you're first getting started, you, as you get older, you start seeing how you, how you got here and, and those, those personality traits start bubbling up. I don't know about you, Rebecca, but I want to hear more about this sensitivity. Me too. I was thinking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that funny? You know, um, we have very thick skin um, being in franchising just because you're dealing with people's livelihoods, their business. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had to quickly learn how to check that at the door, not take it personally, um, and, you know, thicken the skin. Um, but you learn that over time. I think in my early days, I did some crying in the bathroom when, you know, you get off a rough call or get that tough email. Um, but that's, you know, growth in, in any anywhere you go with your career. But yeah, I'm very sensitive. Um, but yeah, I, I work daily on checking it at the door and not letting it come through. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because a sensitive personality is open to feedback, right? Uh, open to critique. And the first question most sensitive people ask is, how can I be better? How can I serve more? So it's, it's not a defensive place 
where those you know others are like oh I know exactly what I'm doing I don't need your feedback blah 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 yeah but a, a truly sensitive maybe almost empathic individual is always looking inside what can I do different how can I step up to the challenge how can I help more um so the feedback yeah. is even though it stings is positive because it has this individual continue to get better and better at what they're Absolutely. doing yeah, I spend most days at the end of the day, usually when I'm going to pick up kids from school and I'm driving in the car thinking about what could I have done better? How did I handle that situation? Are they mad at me? Um, <laughs> did they take that the right way? Um, so it's a blessing and a curse, but I also think it's how I am where I'm at, because if you are not questioning yourself, you're not going to grow um, or you're not going to try to do the right, the next best right thing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, being sensitive, you know, yes, it's tough. Um, but it, it truly is a good thing when you, when you learn how to harness it. it. Sounds like there's a great partnership there between you and your franchisees, like almost like an element of servant leadership, would you say? I hope so. I hope they think of it that way. You know, I can't speak for them. Um, and because I'm sensitive, I worry that they don't like me all the time. It's just, it's a hard road. Um, but I absolutely, I hope they see that I, I'm doing this for them every day that I wake up and I sit behind my computer, or get on the phone or get on the road to visit them in their stores. It's for them. Um, and I, worry daily constantly um about everything that's going on for them not for me um not for something else but for them um so absolutely I, I hope they see it that way and if they don't i hope we get to know each other better in the future so they do see it that way so such a beautiful humbleness about her i can't imagine anybody not liking you and not appreciating i know i just want to embrace you time. Right. Yeah. It's humbleness. It's sensitive. You know, let's backtrack just a little bit, Kristen, because most people stumble into franchising, right? Mm -hmm. They don't deliberately get out of university and say, Oh, I'm going to go into the world of franchising. Yep. So <laughs> you went to university to learn business, to learn marketing, but how did you get into franchising and, and then this incredible, I got to help my franchisee part of you come out. Yeah. Um, so you said stumbled. I totally tripped into it myself. Um, at college, I remember I had a famous professor who I just adored. And before every semester class, we all stood up and said what area of marketing we were going to go into. And, you know, my peers stood up and knew exactly what they wanted to do. They were going into pharmaceutical sales. They were going into fashion merchandising. And I, every single time, just stood up and said, I don't know. Um, and I couldn't even make something up because I was so unclear of what I wanted to do. And I remember the looks I always got, but at least I was being myself. Um, but I, I moved to Arizona after college in Michigan and I dabbled in a few different positions that just really didn't feel fulfilling for me or why did I go to college for this? It, it just didn't seem right. Um, but it was good because I got my hands dirty with a few different areas of what my degree could do for me. And then I was looking online for a new position and I had been a gymnast my majority of my childhood, 13 years plus. And I saw a position with the Little Gym International. They were based in Scottsdale and it was a marketing coordinator position and gymnastics. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is life coming full circle. This is everything, God's plan. And uh, I got into the role and yes, I loved being able to go flip at our stores <laughs> every once in a while and do the marketing for the local and, and global level for the brand but I fell in love with franchising and it was completely unexpected. I just, we had the most, and they still do have the most phenomenal franchisees, master franchisees in other countries. Um, and I just loved it. I loved working for them at the hyper local level, you know, in their communities with their customers. I absolutely loved it. 
But then doing branding on a national and global level was just icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. Um, And because franchising is, you know, you don't have major dollars for um, having all these verticals within your marketing department of digital PR, creative, you wear all the hats. And so I was able to work with our creative agency, our PR agency, um, and do all the things. And I just, I loved it. Um, And while I was there, my brother purchased of the little gym. So he became a franchisee as well. Um, And so I think it was the blend of falling in love with doing this for franchisees, but learning how important it was when my brother purchased one. Um, I understood what this meant for his family, how it affected me, how, um, you know, that he's putting all of his retirement into this. Mm -hmm. And so I think it it was a great learning experience as well to create that strong foundation for where I was to go after the little gym in franchising. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Love the hands-on experience, you know, through your brother, like really with it resonating, it's now part of your family as well as part of your profession. Um, You know, but I I want to address something that I think what you're talking about. So I've written a lot of resumes and LinkedIn profiles in my day. And sometimes a person works in a field for a while, but there's no one exact specialty that the person has. So we, we say that they're a generalist, but the beauty of the generalist is like you said, they get to us they get to wear so many hats and partner in so many areas and also pivot in and out where they are needed. So would Absolutely. you call yourself a marketing generalist of sorts? Absolutely. Um, and even now with so much digital and it changing every day, um, I'm a generalist. And so I know enough, but I love now working with those specialties because they teach you, you know, like you're constantly learning because of it. Um, you're never going to be an expert in one area. I hope I am never an expert in general, but um, yeah, you constantly are just growing, which I, I love about having that generalist title. That's a really interesting way to look at it, Tracy, um, because a generalist kind of sets the stage and then you're hiring or bringing on board those that are specialist in graphic design or public relations or whatever but you're you're the strategist in many many different ways for the brand and then for the individual franchisee um, and to make sure they're getting the results what impresses me about you is not just the commitment to the brand and guarding the brand equity, which is a lot of your role, but you're emotionally vested in the success of your franchisees. Yeah. I, um, and I guess that's, that's why I do it. You know, that's, I think why most of us are in franchising. Um, and, uh, and it's helped me to take on the role that I'm in now. Um, I'm, I've stepped away from marketing, even though I, my marketing team would tell me I have not. Um, but <laughs> I've stepped away into um, a president or a leadership over operations and marketing and finance because you work on, a, you know, I'm not niche, I'm more strategy. Um, and so I think it was, and I think you see a lot of general marketing individuals step into now leadership roles of the company because of that, Um, because we're not niche in a specific one area. Yeah. Yeah. The generalist is also the quarterback, right? Which is what Rebecca was just describing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. We, we take the blows um, and uh, yeah, don't really get much of the credit sometimes, but it's, it's great to be the quarterback because you're driving, you're driving the plays um, and making things happen. Yeah, Knowing where to, where to pull someone in, when to pull someone in, right? Yep. What strengths do you think that you draw from the most in your current position? The strengths? Mm-hmm. Um. For me, I know my weaknesses um, and I hire for my weaknesses. So my strength is the team around me. Um, 
and our brand, not just me, um, because they show up in ways that I can't, um, and they're experts and so um, experienced with what they do that I feel I can step away and let them own something. Um, I've never been the person that I have to have my arms around everything because I'm threatened by someone. I absolutely know where I can and I can't. And so I hire for this team that fills us up um, to be the best that we can be. So I'll, my, the team is the strength. Um, and again, me knowing that I can't do everything um, and let them fly and, and do what they're best at. Yeah. And, and as you make that sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'm a behavioral scientist. It's not easy mm -hmm. to build the right team uh, to get them to see the vision, to trust them completely and their expertise and allow them uh, to execute. Um, yeah. I frequently call that uh, Moneyball, right? We do the movie Moneyball, where it really is about assembling the right team and the manager, the leader, in this case, the president, is simply casting the vision and trusting that each of those players will do where their talent lies and to 100% of their ability, keeping in mind the end goal, which is to grow market share, win, whatever that end goal uh, yep. is. And, you know, it's interesting, offline, we were talking about this a little bit earlier with you. You are a natural leader and you've had some really good mentors and teachers along the way and yet you have a, a slightly introverted mm. personality and this beautiful humility which i think is a wonderful recipe for this new role that you have stepped into so ta let's talk about challenges right let's talk okay. about the challenge of stepping into a leadership role and why many women will actually avoid it what are some of the challenges you see stepping in this role as a woman, as a young woman? Um, tell us about of, that. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, personally, the challenges when I was offered the position that I'm in now, not too long ago, I almost didn't take it. Mm -hmm. um, and I almost didn't take it because my immediate reaction is, am I good enough? Will people think that I'm good enough? Do I have enough experience? Will I do the right thing? Um, and I remember one of the biggest things I negotiated that was sticking to me was severance. Cause what if I fail? Um, and <laughs> what if they say they don't want me anymore? Um, and I just think that's human behavior for me, especially, um, with the things that I personally need to put in order for myself that you are good enough. You do have the experience. You are the right person for this job. So it took me a good 48 hours to get over that. Um, and some discussions with people closest to me. Um, but that was the biggest thing. And then since then, I've had to make some really tough decisions um, with team being one of them really, you know, you gotta be the bad guy. Um, and People like me don't like to be the bad guy all the time because we take everyone's emotions on and we're sensitive. And so it was, it, it, it's been a, a tough year for me. Um, but I, the end goal has always just shown through that, you know, I've got to make the right decisions for the end goal. Um, so I guess those were the biggest challenges of, you know, being that introvert, being that empath, um, having to be the bad guy. But also at the same time, am I good enough to, to, is this the right decision to be the bad guy? Like I, there was a lot of, you can see a, a lot of internal conflict. Um, it's like a psychiatry session here, but um, yeah, uh, th that was, <laughs> that was to the podcast. <laughs> we'll be back next week. <laughs> I think there are so many women that feel the way you felt, not only about stepping up into leadership, but also stepping up into entrepreneurship. What would yeah. you tell them? Go for it. Um, go for it. Go, yeah, go for it. You'll regret it later if you don't. Um, getting in your head like I did um, for a moment 
um, would have just held me back. Um, there's a reason these opportunities are presented to us. Um, people believe in you, go for it, figure it out later. Um, and th that's the biggest thing is just never, never make a decision to belittle yourself um, because we're so much more than we think we are, um, especially as women. Wow, that's a mouthful and so, so true. <laughs> yeah. um, because as, as we talked earlier, many women hold back out of everything you just talked about. They don't go for it. They don't take that promotion. They don't step into entrepreneurship because of all the yada, yada. Uh, yeah. in, in the head and sometimes hard to quiet and a lot of that yada yada is not real right it, it's has nothing to do with our talent or drive or build none no. of none of that well and you know women my age we have young families and so part of the decision is can I do it while balancing being a mother and still making the soccer practices and the swim class. Um, so we've got, we've got a lot on our shoulders, um, but we always figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And we teach our little ones uh, by stepping up to it, uh, yeah. especially our, our daughters, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So talk about the future. Talk about the future a little bit of wagon wash i mean not only has there been a big change for you but there's been some big changes at wagon wash so talk yes. about that and talk about where where are you guys going yes uh thank you for asking um wagon wash is a beautiful brand and our founders jeff and dan built this beautiful model um, that they started over 20 years ago um, and we built it um, upwards of 20 stores. Um, but as most franchise brands who are founder led, you just get to a place where you plateau a little bit. You know, we need capital, we need resources, we need process that could take years and years and years to build. And you just can't catch up to what your organization may need or getting to the next level. And so as Amazingly, um, we uh, were acquired earlier this year by Pet Supplies Plus, who is huge in the pet space, 600 plus units in the US, an amazing corporate office, amazing franchisees who love what they do and are so successful. And so with this acquisition, it really just allows our current franchisees who have open wagon wash stores to get and see the benefits of a huge franchise organization, um, that buying power, the process, the training, um, the capital. <laughs> um, and so it's really going to take their individual businesses to a whole new place that I don't know if we've imagined for them or they have for themselves. But what I'm most excited about is to see Wagon Wash across the country, to see this aggressive growth plan, um, and us serving more communities, more pet parents, dogs, cats, um, to see this brand come to this place that the people behind it know wholeheartedly it can be. Um, so yeah, the future is bright and we're just getting started, but we're just, we're absolutely thrilled. Love that. Me yeah. too. Yeah, beautiful. So, so I'm sorry, Tracy, I interrupted. No, I, I, I'm just, um, I love the idea of the brand, love animals, love who you are to your franchisees and how you partner with them. I just really applaud the work that you're doing and, and the heart and the effort that goes into it, as well as all of the marketing and all of the behind the scenes that takes place. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful brand, but you know, it's created by our franchisees. They're the ambassadors living the brand every day. Um, so the credit really needs to go to those, you know, sure. running stores, our employees, um, and making sure our pets are having the most amazing experience in our stores. You know, uh, Kristen, I've been in franchising 30 years and franchisors that have put their time, money, effort, ideas on the line, like your founders at Wagon Wash, 
um, it's just amazing the effort that they put forward, the risks that they take based on a passion they have and a vision they have. And it's exhausting. Being an entrepreneur is <laughs> exhausting, right? Yes. And you do get to a point where you're just burn out but the passion keeps you going it just keeps you Absolutely. going but you're spent psychologically in every other way and it's it's fabulous to see larger franchisors saying we need more innovation we need this passion like pet supplies coming in and saying this is innovative this is different this is interesting this we need to be part of us or even private equity firms coming in and bringing in strong management, strong financials to take these ideas to the next uh, level. And, you know, Wagon Wash is one of those concepts that was due for just that, for someone to come in and say, we're going to take you to the next level because you got an incredible idea that yeah. needs, you know, some infusion of energy, right? Uh, and that's exactly what happened. So the goal is what? To take over the world? I mean, what, what are we going to do? Yep. <laughs> you know, 2025 is our year. Um, no, uh, the goal is to um, create this beautiful opportunity for more entrepreneurs uh, to see themselves owning, owning a wagon wash, um, but to have them in as many communities as we can to serve our very big dogs like myself um, or our little ones and our cats and um, our pets are our family. Uh, and so Wagon Wash creates this beautiful toy store for them to come in and um, create a healthy lifestyle for them to keep them wagging longer. Um, and so, yeah, that's the goal is just to serve more communities and to create an opportunity of ownership for more um, franchisees. I like that tagline. Wagging longer. Yep. Wagging exactly. more and wagging longer, right? Yep. <laughs> it's beautiful. So it's I love your poster in, in the back. Um, this looks a lot like a European poster art, yep. um, which I collect European. Oh. <laughs> Having been from Europe myself, born and raised in Switzerland. Um, I understand you actually have some European background too, correct? Correct. Yeah. I'm the first born American of um, two very English parents from Manchester, um, Manchester, England. Yes. So um, going back, thank goodness for the first time in the longest time I haven't been back, but going back um, in late May this year to see family. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. My grandmother hails from Manchester, England. Um, so just You're going to love it. Yeah. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. It's a second home for me. My first trip, I was six weeks old and been going oh. back ever since. So, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> um, so final question. Um, was there ever a moment in your life that was like pivotal? It was defining it was a fork in the road in some way that forced you to make some decisions to reassess who you are, reassess your future. Now, it sounds like you did that by taking this current position as president. Was there any other pivotal moment in your life? And what were some of the takeaways or lessons from that, that moment? Amazing question and a few different things kind of went through my head there, um, but I'm going to be honest. Um, it was a few years ago before I came to Wagon Wash. Um, I was, um, my department was laid off um, and I've never, ever been let go or, you know, deemed unimportant before in my life. Um, but I, don't regret it. There's never a day that I regret it. Um, I was doing everything I could to make the right decisions for myself and my team and the company and our franchisees. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I'm so proud of that moment. 
Um, because maybe it was because I was fighting a little too hard for the right thing, but that embodies who I am. And I would never go back and change a second of anything. Um, and it just really cemented who I am as a person. And I think why I'm in the role I am now, life is too short to go to bed thinking that wasn't the right decision or feeling guilty for what you did. It's always the best and right thing to serve others, make sure they're okay. Um, and yeah, you can sleep a lot better at night and wake up a lot happier by doing that. So I think that was a huge moment because I let go of the failure because it happened, you know, that I was here. Um, I'm human. Um, but I picked back up and I was so proud of myself. So I think that was the moment. And, you know, I don't tell that story too often because being in that position is not nice, no. but I'm so proud of myself for, for doing it and being in that role, position that I was. Awesome. That's awesome. How you took this major obstacle, you know, something that many people can get depressed about, but meanwhile, you turned it into something that not only is beneficial for you and your family, but that serves so many others. I applaud you for that. It's beautiful. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because if we're making decisions from a place of integrity mm -hmm. and doing what is right and best in that moment, and it doesn't work out, this is just my belief. Mm -hmm. I believe God is in control. And that wasn't where you needed to continue to be, where you needed to be serving was somewhere else. Now, if you had made a thousand mistakes and, you know, with selfie, that's a different story. Right. But you were coming from a place of integrity and doing what was right and best by your company and by others. And you were moved out of a situation. And now look at you, top yes. of the mountain. Yeah. Well, that is beautiful. Thank you for putting it that way. Cause that's exactly how I feel and believe. And yes, thank you for that. Yeah. I agree, Rebecca. God moves us out of our comfort zones. He yeah. sure does. Even if we are angry at him, sometimes <laughs> we get over it pretty quickly and thank him later. <laughs> yeah. I, I can think of, in fact, I was thinking about it this morning about sometimes I am so grateful that he does step in and takes us out of situations and there's tears and there's this and there's that. And then you look back and say, I could have still been there and yeah. I couldn't be serving and using my talents in this way had I continued to stay there. And I wouldn't have moved. I wouldn't have changed had he not stepped in and, and I'm, I'm proud of you, Kristen. I'm proud of you. Um, what you. you've accomplished and where you are going. Um, so all right. Any final words of wisdom to our listeners, franchise professionals, potential franchisees, women that are smart and looking at ways to become better at who they are? Oh, my goodness. We would need another hour for <laughs> this. Um, but I would say, please, you know, if you're a woman in business, have questions, find me on LinkedIn. I would love to meet you and, and learn from each other. Um, but I guess the, the biggest takeaway, be yourself, always be yourself. Don't feel like you have to fit a person or a role. Um, being yourself is the best thing you can do for your career. It took me a while to figure that out in my 20s, um, but just own who you are and let it shine. Absolutely. Tracy, final thoughts for our audience and for Kristen. I think just from what I'm extrapolating from everything that Kristen is saying, you know, just be open to opportunities, right? That's what I'm hearing a lot of, like timing is everything, right? You stepped into a company that you truly believed wholeheartedly in. And, you know, during the the good times and the times, you know, maybe COVID or lean times or whatever it was, like you always believed in this brand, yeah. you know, especially with your ability to spot brands, identify brands, you knew it was a good brand, you knew that it had integrity behind it, you knew that, you know, it had legs, right? Yes, absolutely. You know? And I, I just, I, I applaud that, you know, and, and the way you partner with your 
franchisees and the way you support them, almost like a, like a helping them to provide the foundation, but lifting them at the same time, the whole servant leadership, love that. I, I just applaud you for all of that and more. I'm thank sure there's you. a lot more that I didn't say, but thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. So uh, thanks, uh, Kristen, for being with us. You can find Kristen on LinkedIn. Uh, if they wanted to learn more about Wagon Wash, what would be the best way to learn? Where, where would they find information? Yep, visit us online, wagonwash.com. Um, and you can learn about franchise opportunities, stores near you, um, but feel free to connect with me as well. Perfect. Thank you for being here, Kristen. We really appreciate it. And those of you listening in today, thank you for listening in to the Franchise Woman podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships are forged. We'll see you next week for another episode.